Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivar Dari Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivar Dari Yashoda Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chadi Yamuna Tira Vana Chade Jaya Radha Madhava Tunja Vihade Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jayam Vishnu Pad Parmaham Saparivadu Kacharya Ashtotra Shatta Shri Srimad His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Grantarad Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Seventh Canto, The Science of God Chapter 4, Hiranyakashipu Terrorizes the Universe Text 22 and 23 Tasyai Namo Stu Kastayai Yatra Ma Harir Ishwaraha Yad Gadba Na Navartante Shantaha Sanyasino Malaha Tasyai Namo Stu Kastayai Yatra Maharir Ishwaraha Yad Gatvana Navantante Shanta Sanyasino Malaha Tasya Namostu Kashtayai Yatra Maharir Ishwaraha Yad Gatvana Navantante Shanta Sanyasino Malaha Yatra 
Tasyai, unto that Namaha, our respectful obeisances. Astu, let there be Kashtayai, direction. Yatra, wherein Atma, the super soul. Harihi, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ishwaraha, the Supreme Controller. Yat, which, Katva, approaching. Na, never. Nivartante, return. Shantaha, peaceful. Sanyasinaha, saintly persons in the renounced order of life. Malaha, <sighs> pure. Itite samyatmana samahita dio malaha upasastur hirishkesham vinindra vayu bojanaha. Okay, uh, translation. Let us offer our respectful obeisances unto that direction where the Supreme Personality of God is situated, where those purified souls in the renounced road of life, the great saintly persons, go and from which, having gone, they never return. Without sleep, fully controlling their minds and living only on their breath, the predominating deities of the various planets began worshipping Rishikesh with this meditation. Purport. The two words, Tasyai, Kashtayai, are very significant. Everywhere, in every direction, in every heart, and in every atom, the Supreme Personality of God is situated in His features as Brahman and Paramatma. Then, what is the purpose of saying Tasyai Kashtayai in that direction where Hari is situated? During Hiranyakashipu's time, His influence was everywhere, but He could not force His influence into the places where the Supreme Personality of God had had His pastimes. For example, on this earth, there are such places as Vrindavan and Ayodhya, which are called Dhams. In the Dham, there is no influence from Kali Yuga or any demon. If one takes shelter of such a Dham, worship of the Lord becomes very easy, and resultant spiritual advancement quickly takes place. In fact, in India, one may still go to Vrindavan and similar places to achieve the results of spiritual activities quickly. Om Ganesha Vrinda Shri Ganesha Shokya Shulan Madhitam Nenitus Mai Shri Guru Vena Maha Makam Kritu Vachalam Pangamangai Tegadim Yatri Patamam Vande Shri Guru Ndinitana Nam Vancha Kapati Bishra Kripa Sindhu Beva Chapatitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namana Maha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Translation again, let us offer a respectful obeisance as unto that direction where the Supreme Personality of God is situated, where those purified souls in the renounced sort of life, the great saintly persons, go, and from which, having gone, they never return. Without sleep, fully controlling their minds and living only on their breath, predominating deities of the various planets began worshiping Rishikesh with this meditation. Salt in my bread? Oh. Bread? Oh, their breath. Salt in their breath. Okay. <laughs> Funny. Krishna, as we've heard many times, he is everywhere, in every direction, in every heart, and in every atom. So Krishna is there as Paramatma. So where is that place where Krishna is not? He's everywhere. But here, uh, Prayer is being stated that let us offer respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
where the Supreme Personality of God is situated. And Prabhupada explains that in the purport that uh, the influences of Hiran the influence of Henry Kashipu was being felt everywhere. But there's only one place where it wasn't being felt, and that is in holy places such as Vrindavan and Ayodhya. And he's saying that in the Dham there's no influence of Kali Yuga or any demon. So he's making that point. Very interesting. Uh, so then the question is, what what makes a dom means a holy place a holy place? What do you think? You want to give some answers? Yes. You could you could raise your hand? Okay. So one is wherever Krishna Gita is happening. Okay. Okay. Where saintly people reside. Okay. What other, what what else makes a dam a dam, a holy place a holy place? There's some other important factor. Where Krishna is, yes. So where Krishna is, what other things are there? Holy rivers, yes. Devotional activities, right? Makes a holy place a holy place. So you have Krishna's appearance there, or Krishna residing there. That, that is a very important aspect of a holy place. You have devotees residing there. It's a very important aspect. And you have the activities of devotional service, such as hearing and chanting, shavanam, kirtanam, and other devotional uh, processes. That's also a very important aspect. And of course, you have holy rivers. Um, yeah, and other things. So, uh, so Srila Prabhupada, he left Vrindavan, Dham, in his advanced age, as we've all heard maybe a million times now <laughs> over the years. He left Vrindavan. Um, and he came to America, then all over the world, to spread Krishna consciousness. And in spreading Krishna consciousness, he established Radha Krishna deities all over the world, as well as Gornitai and Jagannath, all over the world. And these deities are very, uh, you could say, uh, deities that are, that are <clears throat> very forms of Krishna that are very intrinsic or very uh, the most important in our Gaudiya Vaishnav uh, understanding of things. Like Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra. Okay, there are Krishna and Balaram and Subhadra filling transcendental ecstasy, being separated from their devotees in Vrindavan, right? They're in Dwarka and then they're filling separation from the devotees of Vrindavan. So they're very, it's a high level rasa uh, going on there. And you have Radha Krishna. Not every Krishna worshiper worships Radha Krishna. They worship uh, Rukmini Krishna. They worship Krishna and Arjuna. They worship Krishna alone. But Radha Krishna worship is very high, most high worship. And then you have Gornitai, right? Krishna coming in the form uh, or in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So all of so all of these deities are very, you could say, high level worship in our Gaudiya Vaishnava understanding. So Prabhupada established deities throughout the whole world. And aside from establishing deities, before he established the deities, <laughs> there were devotees uh, there living. And before there were devotees living there, there was a temple. So get a temple, get devotees. Well, so actually, sometimes they would get devotees first and then a temple later. 
the devotees would sometimes live in garage or something like that, tents, like in Juhu. Uh, so, so yeah, temple, devotees, deities. And Srila Prabhupada went, went as far, so far, as to name the different communities. Uh, for example, New Dwarka, or New Jagannath Puri, or New Panihati Dam, or uh, New Navadweep, and so on. New Govardhan, right? New Vrindavan. So he he went as far as to name the temples, these uh, the communities in different ways. So what does this new mean? Can anybody say? What does this new mean? You want to want to talk into the mic? There might be somebody watching, or somebody watching later. Because Krishna and the devotees are there, and the activities of devotional service are there. It's none different from the actual dam, which it's named after. Yeah. So you have like New York, or right, different. Apparently, Prabhupada didn't rename New York. It was already new. So, Prabhupada just left it in New York. Anyways, um, so, so Srila Prabhupada, he wanted to create these uh, holy places, or he did create these holy places outside of India. New Govardhan, New Vrindavan, so on, so on, so on. New Navadvip. Uh, and Prabhupada went as far as to give plans. For example, he gave plans in New Vrindavan that you build right, the Goswami temples, replicas of the Goswami temples. And devotees have done that in different places of the world, like Shivaram Swami, New Vrajadam. They've he's created different kuns and so on. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also did a similar thing in Mayapur. He had Radha Kund there and Govardhan there. You could say Govardhan is a lot smaller in Mayapur. <laughs> Govardhan Hill, it's probably like, I don't know, maybe half of this room in length. So you could walk around in just a minute or something. It's easier to do Govardhan Parikrama like that. Did you do Govardhan Parikrama Prabhu? Yes, I did, in Mayapur. <laughs> yeah, I did it 50 times. I walked around. To do Govardhan Parikrama in Vrindavan, a little bit more difficult, especially if you don't have your shoes on. Devotees, we're hearing devotees struggling, right, to complete that. Uh, now, whether other Acharyas did that, going further in, into the past. Uh, maybe somebody here has some reference. I mean, I can't think of any reference. Uh, but but Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur did it. Very interesting idea, and Prabhupada did it. And you could say Prabhupada expanded on that idea. Um, So, so a holy place, it's, it's, again, it's a place where devotees reside, where Krishna reside, and where the activities of devotional service reside, or where activities of devotional service uh, are performed. Uh, but even though Krishna may reside there, and even though there may be devotional activities going on there, if materialistic people, um, you could say, reside there, it, it becomes very uh, problematic. It becomes very unpleasant. It becomes... The, 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 the sacredness of it is... It's not lost, but it's um, covered. It's covered or compromised. 
and it's it, it becomes yeah it's it's problematic. So for example, like Gorakhshor Das Babaji, he was being advised by someone that you should you should should go reside in Radhakund, and this was like this was a while ago, right? And then he said, well, I would, but there's 11 men there who are contaminating the atmosphere. Um, so so-called devotees there. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati commented later, and he said, maybe now it's increased to 108. Now I don't know what it's increased to. But it's interesting because you could say it's such a holy place, but still Gorakhashoda's Babaji was so disturbed and so bothered by the people who lived there. He didn't want to live there. Very interesting. Of course, there's 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 comments by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur where he says that he feels himself unfit to live there due to his Consciousness, of course, that's his, his humility, but he felt himself unfit, and then he said, "Therefore, I could only try to re I could only reside there in my mind." Um, so, for and also another example, these holy places. I mean, there's so many holy places in India, but. Sometimes they become like a like a place where people are harassed for take a guess. Money. Yes, money. So you go into the you go into the temple and you're taking darshan of Krishna, you're trying to pray, right? For whatever you're praying for, hopefully devotional things. <laughs> and you have a pujari there just like harassing you big time for for money. I mean, one devotee told me recently that they're a holy. They're in Dwarka. I mean, excuse me, but they're in Dwarka, and they went up to take darshan of the deity, and there was one. Who knows? I don't know if he was part of the temple. I don't know if he was just there, <laughs> but one person, and he he literally grabbed his head, like grabbed the p devotee's head, and he and he pushed his head down, like offering a like helping him offering obeisances to himself. Okay. And he pushed his head down and he said, I'm a Brahmin. And he said, um, you know what the next thing he said is? Give me a donation. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Like somebody physically grabs your head and pushes it down to to, to to his feet, and he says, I'm a Brahmin, give me a donation. I mean, that's pretty wild. And you know what this devotee said? <laughs> no, what the devotee, the devotee just said, I, I, I don't need your blessings, I'm going to play Dwarkadish, you know, thank you very much. But he was making the point that a lot of people, they give him a donation because they're scared, you know, okay, he's a Pujari, and he's a Brahmin, and, it, you know, I, they feel obliged to give him a donation. Because they're scared, you know, maybe something evil will happen to them or whatever, who knows. But this person just, no, no, I'm... Um, so, of course, that's just one example. There's other examples of holy places becoming... Like that, so, and people lose faith on this basis. Okay, I I go to these whole. I mean, how 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 sacred are these people? These people are supposed to be representatives of God, and they're just they're just demanding respect and money from me. And of course, there's a whole sinful activities thing going on. Um, so it's a it's it it's a challenge for the members of the International Society of Christian Consciousness because especially people you could say part of the part of the quote unquote clergy if you want to use that term it's a challenge because okay I don't think any devotee is going to <laughs> when somebody comes here and they're going to grab their head and 
make them offer obeisances and demand a donation. <laughs> but um, it's a challenge in the sense that we are, we are supposed to contribute to the holiness of the place by the purity of our consciousness, which is based on our sincere chanting and hearing and doing all the other things we've, we do. So it's a challenge, actually, to keep a holy place holy. Um, now, in the Dom, there's no influence from Kali Yuga or any other demon. What do you think about that? <laughs> because it seems like there's influence of Kali Yuga, right? Seem that it's going on, and that there's influences of demons. So, how do we, how do we understand that? Thinking that there's no influence on the Dhamma, there's an influence on on us, it it, on our ability to see the Dham. The Dham is there, but there's certain demons who influence us so that we can't see, maybe, or Kali Yuga influences us so that we can't see the Dham. That's good. Any other things? You want to pass him the mic? No, he. Bhaktivinoda yeah. Thakur says it's covered by a thin layer of materialism. So externally, we'll see the performing all everything. And as he said, it's not dham is not touched by that, but it, it's covered by thin, our vision and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's covered by a thin layer of, or thick or then some layer of illusion which covers our eyes we cannot see. So in other words, there may be so many things going on, supposedly going on in the Dom, right? But, um, but still, Krishna's there. <laughs> Inconceivable, but yeah, Krishna's there. Krishna is there. And his pastimes are going on, and these are the places where his pastimes happen, and they're still going on, and it's it's a transcendental realm, and it's not influenced. But uh, yeah, our our consciousness is influenced. So if one takes shelter of such a dom, worship of the Lord becomes very easy. So we should take shelter of some dom, whether that's around the world. Like we discussed, there's so many dams, so we could take shelter of New Govardhan Dam, for example, here. Um, and then it becomes very easy. So what does it mean to take shelter? What do you think? So... To solely rely on, you know, for completely depend on whatever you take shelter of. Yeah. For all your necessities. So how do we take shelter of the Dham? Okay. Surrender. Okay. Surrender, okay. Well, I mean, one thing you're taking shelter of the Dham because they say, if you go to the Dham just to take a bath and... and eat and sleep. So you eat and sleep. Now, of course, sleeping in the Dham, they say you sleep in Mayapur. That's also beneficial. <laughs> it's like they, it's, it's, just one second, please. It says that you, like you, you're offering obeisances, right, in the Dham, just by sleeping. So that's beneficial. And of course, you're taking prasadam, okay, right? We hope, taking prasadam. Um, so yeah, that's beneficial, but okay, eating, sleeping, bathing. Bathing means bathing in the Ganga, right? So but but Krishna says in the in the in the in the tenth canto that for someone who does that, just eats, sleeps, bathes, means bathes in the holy place of the Dham, he doesn't he doesn't consider them a, it, there's not a very high estimation of that person. They're considered a go 
Kara, Kara, Kara means donkey. Yeah. Yeah. No better than a cow or a donkey. So, but what does he stress there? He he highlights, if you want to say Krishna highlights, he highlights hearing from sadhus, hearing from saintly persons, as the real, you could say, essence of taking shelter of the Dham. Because by hearing from saintly persons, we'll understand what the Dham is. We'll understand what activities should and should not be in the Dham. We'll understand what it means to be a devotee and what it means to live in the Dham. And, what it, and we'll understand Krishna, the main reason why it's a Dham. We'll understand all of these things. And we'll understand what to do and what not to do. And by associating with the sadhus, our consciousness will become purified and we will become Krishna conscious, um, which is the main, you could say, which is the, yeah, which those living in the Dham should be Krishna conscious. I guess I offended him. Sorry. Didn't mean to. Um, so if we take shelter of the Dham, worship of the Lord becomes very easy. means if we hear from the sadhus, if we hear and we hear and we hear and we hear some more, then it'll become easy, easier, easier, easier. You, you had something you wanted to? You already said something. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it'll become easier and easier to be Krishna conscious uh, if we take shelter of the Dham. And result in spiritual advancement quickly takes place. In fact, in, in India, one may still go to Vrindavan and some other places to achieve the results of spiritual activities quickly. So, so as we were discussing, there, is, there are so many dhams throughout the world that Srila Prabhupada created. But there's also uh, Vrindavan Dham. Mayapur Dham and other Dhams in India. We're not exactly in India, but anyways, you get the idea. Uh, and it's important to visit those uh, if one can. I mean, some devotees can, actually. It's another point about Prabhupada creating Dhams throughout the world. I was talking with one devotee in Guyana, and he said, he's been a devotee for, I don't know, at least 15 years, maybe 20, but... I said, you ever went to India? And he said, oh, I, I, was, I was going to India, but then I got sick in London, I had to come back. And I said, you ever went since? And he said, no, never went to Vrindavan. And, uh, and I said, why? And he said, oh, it's very expensive. He said, you have to be practically like very wealthy to go because the tickets are expensive. The airline tickets are much, much more expensive. And also how much money you make working there is less. So you have to be kind of well-to-do to go to India. And that's a lot of devotees' uh, experience in certain countries. So therefore you have like a, this idea of creating doms and throughout the world, Srila Prabhupada, knowing that a lot of people, it would be difficult for them to go. But of course, if one can go, then they should, and it's important. Uh, to go and visit and to uh, yeah pray and and be absorbed in scripture and sadhu sangha in these holy places where Krishna performed his pastimes where Lord Chaitanya performed his pastimes very important uh, and and one may even live there uh, of course, it's not so easy to live in Vrindavan or Mayapur. You have to have some, you definitely have to have some Adhikar. <laughs> and even if you somehow or other make the mark in terms of your having some Adhikar, it's another thing to actually really uh, experience the true nature of Vrindavan and Mayapur while living there and not just experience it on the superficial level. So there's different stages, you could say, 
of, ex of, of living there experience. Now, one may live there, and of course, that living there, or that living here, or that living there, or anywhere, uh, really, ultimately, should be in consultation with one's uh, shiksha gurus, with one's diksha guru, with one's... Uh, yeah, with one's gurus, and it should be a very honest and uh, honest uh, and clear decision. Um, yeah, living in Vrindavan. Uh, so does anybody have any question? Yes. Thank you for the class. Very deep topic. Uh, you mentioned that uh, holy places, Sila uh, Prabhupada made in all the world. And uh, recently, I don't remember from where, but I, I heard that. Um, <coughs> That a holy place uh, becomes uh, holy when the, some uh, holy you know, saint person uh, was there, yeah. and uh, this uh, how, how his consciousness is uh, influence on the place, and uh, and also this nice topic that um, uh, we should uh, listen. So, uh, holy place opens through the ears. Yes. And, um, but um, uh, also I remember that uh, Lord Chaitanya said to Lord Nityananda when he sent him to Preach. Uh, yes, to Bengali, and he said that when you start Kirtan, I all time will be in this kirtan, mm. and uh, he promised it about it. And um, this is reality. When when we make kirtan, if we ask how to say call address to Krishna, then Lord Chaitanya comes, and uh, it it uh, more powerful when we go to streets. And I don't know why, but uh, I feel it. Yeah. And uh, this is, uh, how to say, it's my experience that uh, Lord Chaitanya uh, comes. Yesterday I was um, go to Pacific Beach with, uh, you remember his new devotee? He, oh, I don't remember the name. Um, George? No, George. Fred? No, no, it is uh, how to say, no, you devotee, it means he, he, he comes a few times only. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, what? Name too. Nice. And um, when I start to go, he asked me, where you go? I mean, uh, go to book distribution, Kirtan. He, let's go together. And uh, he, uh, we singing together, and it's very nice. I, I um, first time, uh, in the first moment, I, I think, oh, why I take him? You know, something like his mind. <laughs> but um, when we start singing, um, I, I felt that um, Lord Chaitanya came. <laughs> nice. Andrew yeah, Swami, he likes to quote from one past Acharya that uh, Japa is perfect uh, chanting in Kirtan with you know, devotees is more perfect and distributing the holy names to the conditioned souls is most perfect so you got perfect, more perfect, most perfect so there's a special mercy to be obtained and giving the conditioned souls, the holy names. Uh, soon, at last day of this month, which is coming soon, New Year's Eve, we will go 
downtown San Diego, and there'll be a lot of people out there <laughs> trying to enjoy themselves, mostly material ways. I'm just joking. It's completely material ways. Uh, besides the devotees out there. <laughs> And uh, we'll we'll go chant, you know, for a number of hours, late into the night, actually going into the morning, early morning. I think we leave at 10 and come back, yeah, sometime after 12. So we're out there for a number of hours, and it's an interesting experience, a lot of people. So that would be a good time to uh, uh, give the holy name. But yeah, these these places... These capitals of the world, you could say capitals of Kali, are sinful places, capital sinful places of the world. There's a number of them throughout the world. Uh, they, they, you could say, attract special mercy for those who reside, devotees who reside in them and try to engage in outreach. Because they need special mercy to live in such places and they need special mercy to be able to have the strength to give Krishna consciousness to the people of such places. And uh, anyway, so, so yeah, we could say that living in San Diego and trying to give out mercy to others, it, it attracts a special attention of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that um, when I first time came there, um, this is uh, and um, how many times did you go? Uh, one time. One time. Okay. But um, this is a festival during few days, maybe three, and um, when I uh, came. Um, uh, uh, devotees, um, um, I, I don't remember exactly why, but happens that we go to this uh, Krishna village inside this festival uh, with one devotee, and um, we go, we went uh, through the whole festival. This is so terrible. Uh, I, I, I thought that we go, we went maybe... 25 minutes until we arrived and it was I, I, I thought that it never end <laughs> it's, it's so terrible and uh, when we came um, uh, started Harinam it's just like oasis like in in a desert <laughs> um, yeah. and um, evening time was um, evening Kirtan and um, this Kirtan was so ecstatic uh, and I, I, uh, I thought that it seems to me maybe something I don't know why. And next day, the same time, the same feelings, and I understand that uh, how Krishna uh, very uh, satisfied by service of Indra Jumna Swami Maharaj. It was so amazing. Thank you. Yeah, about the about the holy places opening due to us hearing uh, Krishna Kata properly. Prabhupada was with Srila Prabhupada was with his guru, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, and he wasn't initiated at that time. Was, and then somehow or other there was an announcement there on the parikram, and then there was an announcement of who wants to go see this beautiful deity? Everybody raised their hands and jumped up and ran out practically. And then, Pra and then, then Prabhupada he said, "No, I'll, I'll stay here and I'll listen," because Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was speaking. But it was only it was it was a lot of the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's close disciples, sannyasis and others. And he had Prabhupada there as a household, and he was and he was listening. Uh, but Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur he liked that. You know, and then when he when it was time for Prabhupada to get initiated, and he said, oh, "I've noted him. He likes to hear." So, but it was a, it's a very instructive thing, very instructive uh, lesson. That that okay, if you just go see, what will you see? But you have to hear, and then you'll be able to see. So that's our process. We hear, and then we'll be able to see or understand things. So, does anybody have any other? 
questions or comments? Yes. I'm sorry. Um, that reminded me of a verse that you may not know. This is a prayer of Lord Brahma. Tom Bhakti Yoga Patibhabata Rich Saroja Asay to take Shita Patona Nanata Punksam. He's saying he's praising praying to Krishna. From Bhakti Yoga by the process of my Lord, by the process of Bhakti Yoga. Patibhabata Rich Saroja, you take your seat in the heart of such persons who are serious and who follow the path of seeing through hearing. Shavanapato. From but I say shuta ikshita shuta ikshita pato the path of seeing to hearing which is actually what you're talking about you pure and you know it's all like we purify the senses through hearing chanting hearing chanting and that and then you can see and you can see actually see the deity as Krishna and actually talk to the deity like the great the great devotees you know you can see so that what and and that came up recently isn't it like in the spiritual world doesn't everybody have that function where you, all your senses can perform their function in the other senses. That was a question, and I think we did some research, and I read that, yeah. <laughs> but even on this plan. All right. Okay, Grant Raj Shivan Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Text 24 tomorrow, and that is Mukunda Charna Prabhu. And then Thursday is going to be a Mo Dalila Prabhu. That's thir- Thursday is the Mogaliva's new day. Friday is Govardhan.